Oh, is she? Okay. We're live. Hmm? We're live. Okay, good morning everybody. Um, our final members just uh, just arrived, so I think we can now start the meeting. Welcome to, to members uh, of the committee and members of the other people, other members, colleagues to uh, the meeting. My name is Eric Kerry, Councillor Eric Kerry. I'm chairman of the Pension Fund Committee. May I remind members that the meeting is now being broadcast live with some guests attending remotely so they need to make sure they use their microphones when speaking and we all use our microphones when speaking please um, so we now move on to the agenda and item number one is the minutes of the last meeting which we held on the 29th of july can i ask if the uh, if the committee of the minutes of the last meeting can can be agreed please are we all okay with that Thank you very much. That's uh, unanimous. Item number two, apologies for absence. May I ask Joe, may I ask um, if we have any apologies and substitutions, please? I don't think we do. Thank you. We, we have had a, a couple of people who have notified us they're unable to attend today. Um, we've now received apologies from Sue Reader, who's the scheduled bodies representative, Councillor Gordon Moore from Rushcliffe Borough Council and Councillor David Lloyd from Newark and Sherwood Borough Council. But I yeah so that is it for okay the anybody else have any other apologies please i don't see any indications okay thank you very much joe i think we're there item number three on the agenda is declarations of interest by members and officers so 3a is do any members or officers present have any private in have any disclosable pecuniary interest to declare please i think that's a no Moving on to 3B, do any members or officers present have any private interests, either pecuniary or non-pecuniary, to declare, please? No, I don't see any indications. OK. Thank you very much. Um, item number four, then, is the uh, working party report. Um, before I hand over to Tamsin, who's going to present uh, the report, I move recommendations set out on page 11 of the agenda pack which asked the committee to agree to change the strategic benchmark as set out in the report. And uh, I'll move that. Can I have a seconder, please? I'll second that and reserve the right to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Camilleri. OK, Tamsin, uh, over to you for the report, please. Thank you, Chair. The Working Party met in August to consider options for investing the fund's liquidity assets and discuss benchmark indices. Various options were discussed for holding liquid assets in the shorter term while less liquid asset classes were invested and an indicative approach agreed. The various benchmarks and targets were discussed. An update to the strategic benchmark was proposed to reflect recent changes in the equity allocation and suggested improvements in some constituents, which is recommended to members for agreement today. The discussions were followed by a training on responsible investment by LGPS Central. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for the brief overview, Tamsin. I know we did a we did a lot of work in the working group and and a lot of attendance there to, to go through this in in immense detail. So thank you very much for that, and thank you to William as well for helping us uh, in 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 that process. So I'll now open that up to members. Do any members have any questions or comments, please? Great. Yeah, it was very good working group, um, but I think. I, I vaguely remember, well, in fact, I think I precisely remember that we had a quite a useful discussion on performance indicators as well, the working group. 
and there's no mention of it here, but I know there's an officer commitment to go away and look at performance indicators to see if there's anything we could do about it, as far as I remember. And I think William, um, I mean, it's basically William telling us, oh, yes. well, we couldn't really find a performance indicator. Yes. But what we'd do, we'd, we'd, look, we'd, we'd look at it, yes. and there, there may be other things, and there's a fairly obvious performance indicator, which is whether we balance our yeah. books. So that was a summary of some of it, but it was, it was, he did undertake to go away and see what you could do. Uh, my, my, recollect, my recollection was that there was an email sent, I think, afterwards, but I'm not sure about whether we've moved on from there yet. I thought I responded by email yes. to that, but... Um... Yes, yes. Well, uh, can, can, OK, so I, I don't think we can answer that question right now, Graham. If you're happy, we'll, we'll take a look and come back to you again, um, is that, if that's OK. Sure, no, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. OK, no problem. Are you happy with that, William? You can, we can repeat. Yeah, I, I will dig out my email, and I'm fairly certain I did. I'll dig out yeah. the email. If I didn't, I apologise. Thank you very much. Any other further questions or comments, please? Oh, Anne, yes, please. Just follow, yes, because it was a question that I raised about the wording. I think it was average, something. No, I can't remember what it, what it was, but the wording was seemed to be quite um, amorphous or indefinite. And I think you clarified that because yeah. I was a bit, um, was it about a Japanese fund? Or, yeah. And uh, it was, how do you measure against something that uh, was a little bit uncertain what the target was? I, I, I'm sure, I think you answered that question. I haven't got the, the information yeah, in front of me. But yeah, I'm, I'm sure, out, yes. Afterwards, thank yes, you. You did, okay. Councillor Pringle, I think you indicated. Thanks, Chairman. Just a, 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 a question on process of the working party. I mentioned to you before. Um, I'm not aware that the working party is a decision-making group, um, that it's an information group, whereas at paragraph six, the, the, the advisor's report um, was accepted. So it, it's slightly misleading for public. I think a, a choice of words in reference to, to recognition that decisions are made in this this meeting today will be uh, more appropriate for, for us all. I'm talking about here. No, I mean we, we, this this committee makes that decision, Mike. So, uh, but it's and from from the recommendation that came through the working. That's what we're here to do now, and that's the recommendation that's that I right. moved. I'm I moved just at saying the, that uh, at the start. In, in paragraph six. Yeah. It seems to have already been accepted, and I wasn't at that meeting, so. Okay. Um, I think from a public point of view. It should be noted okay. or, or, or referenced that the decisions are made at this meeting. Yeah, thank you for that, Claire. Thank you very much for raising that, Michael. That's a good point. Thank yeah. you. And, and my apologies if I've chosen the wrong wording. Yeah, yeah, okay. I don't see any other indications. The recommendation has been moved and seconded. So can we have uh, indication of votes? All those in favour, please indicate. Uh, any against? Any abstentions? I think that was unanimous. Thank you very much. That's carried. OK, so we now move on to the review of fund strategies, item number five. This is, again, the culmination of um, bringing all those strategies together so they're all linking correctly and are clear. So. That work's been done. Um, there's a lot of paperwork in here. I'm sure we've all all read them. Um, but I will move the recommendations on page 19 of the the, append of the agenda pack and uh, move that the that we approve the revised documents appended to the report. Tamsin, do you want to add anything to that? So I may ask for a seconder, please. I'll second that. Thank you. Very much. And reserve the right to speak. Thank you. Apologies, Tamsin. Over to you, please. Thank you, Chair. The fund is, is required to prepare, maintain and publish a number of strategy statements which must then be kept under review and, if necessary, revised. Other strategies are produced by the fund as best practice to confirm and clarify operations and to enable clear communication with employers and members in the scheme. The fund reviews its strategy documents on a broadly annual basis and most have not required any significant changes this year. The more significant changes are as follows. 
The communication strategy now includes a reference to communications with the general public, especially around climate change and responsible investment. As discussed at the last committee meeting, the funding strategy statement now includes a policy for contribution reviews and the debt spreading agreement and deferred debt agreement. No changes to these were required following the consultation process. The governance compliance statement has been reviewed and updated to explain how climate risks are governed as recommended in the climate risk action plan. The main update to the investment strategy statement relates to the changes to asset allocation, which were discussed at the January working party and approved at the March committee meeting and to the strategic benchmark discussed at the August working party and brought to this committee meeting for approval. Also of note is the reference to our new climate strategy. The risk management strategy and risk register last went to committee in October 2020. No new risks have been added to the risk register, but the risk of LGPS Central incurring net costs or decreased investment returns has decreased slightly, reflecting lower anticipated cost growth and improved returns. The documents have been revised to reflect recent and planned work including work done to manage climate risk as recommended in the Climate Risk Action Plan. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Tamsin. Um, so this really brings everything together, as I mentioned uh, uh, before. I'd like to open up any questions or comments to the committee, please. Councillor Waters, Lee. Thank you, Chairman. Um, still trying to get my PC to open, which isn't ideal, so I'm not sure what's happened there. Um, looking at the asset allocations, um, at the moment, we've got about 6% in infrastructure, and we're looking to increase that potentially to 8%. Um, I note that the pension had a deficit of 407 million, and we're targeting, is it 5.8% growth, essentially, to plug that debt. And that's why we're increasing the um, allocation to infrastructure. And we can have up to 20% of liquid assets to try and help meet that target. <clears throat> I'm just wondering about managing some conflicts of interest. For example, our council is in the business of repairing roads and infrastructure. It will be investing in roads. The pension is designed, hopefully, to generate a profit. So how are we managing that conflict of interest? Furthermore, if we look at the infrastructure holdings, we have a big allocation to uh, an investment trust company such as HICL, and they do a lot of PFI and public, um, private public finance, um, PPP, and an allocation of that is into schools. Bearing in mind we have a lot of teachers who are members of this fund, what is the conflict of interest? How has it been managed that essentially teachers are paying into this scheme and through PFI investments, um, their role is ultimately being privatised. If we look at some of the other holdings like Triple Point, that Triple Point Social Housing, that's an investment in social housing. How has our conflict of interest there been managed? Um, in addition, some of the infrastructure investments, that investment I said, HICL, the pension fund has £27 million into it, which you'll see on the internet over our holdings. A substantial portion of that, I think 29%, is invested in health. So that's like the NHS. So essentially, our pension fund is taking profits out of the NHS through PPP and PFI at the time of the, pande at the, time of the pandemic. Is that something this pension fund really should be doing? But the question is, with those infrastructure investments, how are we managing that conflict of interest? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Lee. Um, you, you make good points, which do, are considered. We take advice, independent advice on our investments, and, and we work at diversifying those risks from, from our fund. Just, just to clarify the position on teachers, um, my impression is that teachers are part of the Teachers Pension Agency Fund, rather than the, uh, and I'll move on. Tamsin, can you, the, the whole point of this exercise here is to bring together all of our strategies. We have to do it, it's an annual exercise to make sure that we comply. The, the, your, the points you're making are really issues that need to be discussed at asset allocation level, 
at investment strategy level, which we which we have already planned into the work program in, and working groups between now and, and and January in the new year. So we will we will be discussing those, and I'm, I'm quite happy to to look at that in in the interim, so that we have answers for you when we get to that stage. Uh, anything to add, Tamsin? Certainly, from um, an investment yeah. uh, point of view, there there aren't conflicts of interest between. The committee and the investment mm. managers, because there's there's too much independence between yes. them. You've got not got any direct influence over them, so there's no conflict of interest in that interpretation of the of the term. Um, I, I think some of the issues uh, Councillor Waters is raising are perhaps fundamental uh, views on the um, the use of private finance to fund public services and that's a bit outside the pension funds remit. <laughs> okay thank you for that uh, Tamsin. Any other questions or comments please? Graham. Yeah page 48 of the 176. Yeah. Well I'm very pleased we've got to this stage of company engagement because um, I think we've gradually been edging towards it. And I've never felt that we're actually going to start getting to grips with our investments um, <clears throat> in, in renewables or, 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 or in fact, um, carbon investments without doing it. Um, so I'm pleased we've got to this stage. And thank you very much. My next my, the question that emerges from this is, um, how are we going to monitor it? I would like to know um, what and what involvement this committee would have in the monitoring? Uh, com coming up, at, um, we've, we've got our climate risk analysis at work at, on September the 30th, yeah. um, which hopefully you will be coming along oh. to. So um, that's part of the process, yeah. and that will feed into the other right, strategies. Okay. Well, that we'll, Tamsin, would you like just to, to, to put that into um, better words than I can come um, up with, please? Certainly. The climate risk workshop that we're holding on the 30th yeah. of September is a really positive opportunity yeah. for all members to come together and talk about the climate risks for the pension fund and how we can best deal with those yeah. going forward. Um, I think um, Councillor Chapman's question was more about monitoring the uh, carbon footprint of the mm. pension fund and related metrics. Yeah. And the comfort, right, well, right. we report we report quarterly on our on our voting um, data um, and we're looking at a way of improving that um, we also circulate on a quarterly basis reports from our main managers so from central and from Schroders and um, from Elgin and indeed we're now circulating the the lap quarterly engagement report. So we are already providing members with a lot of information on the engagement which is happening on our behalf. Um, I think this is engagement which has been going on for quite a long time, but we're definitely doing more to communicate it yeah. both to members and to the general public than the, we have you, done in the past. The impression I get from this is that there will, that it will be company specific and not, ag ah, and not right. sector right. aggregate. Right. 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 That's this what I'm is, talking about. Right. OK, so this is sorry, I've, I've, I've not quite scrolled down far enough on this page, really. So this is the climate stewardship plan, which is part of our um, climate action plan and our uh, climate risk analysis. Um, and that will be reported to the November meeting. Um, and that's specific work, work where Central have focused in on a number of identified companies that they've identified uh, as highest risk. Okay, yeah. but, can, can, I, but can I add to that? I, I think the important issue is that, that that risk work will look at some form of benchmark. It's a very, benchmarking in this field is very, very difficult. Uh, there's lots of uh, lack of information in the right detail and consistency to make, to, to, to make it a perfect job, but we're doing what we can in terms of that analysis to get the best view of where we are compared to benchmark and our but performance <clears throat> in in total, but with with the company work going on yeah. in the background. Yeah, because yeah. our policy, which which I concur personally, yeah. not that it makes any difference because we haven't got a vote, um, is that we will engage in order to fur further the aims of uh, decarbonisation with those companies 
um, which are involved in yes. extra carbon extraction. Yes. Yep. Right, and that, that I don't disagree with. And the purpose is to use our influence to get them out of it and to moving into uh, more, less polluting areas. Yep. So the purpose of this, presumably, is to monitor that progress, because it may well be at some stage that some companies um, do not respond fast enough or, in fact, are being recalcitrant. Right, and therefore we need to take action. There are others where we can actually, you know, say we need to put more pressure on. Right? And this is a way of doing it. This is a way of highlighting which companies we need to put, putting focus on, <coughs> rather than leaving it to sector, yeah. sort, sort of aggregated sector approach, which I think is, is a bit nebulous. Do you want to respond to that, Tamsin? Um, just to remind members that the action which is taken when we engage on I mean, we're particularly talking about oil and gas companies here aren't we and, and the climate risk um, it's with a view to the financial sustainability of that company um, because if we all can see um, if we're to have um, uh, if we're to reach the the, um, the aims of the net zero by 2050 that we're going to have to burn a lot less oil and gas so for those companies to be sustainable they will need alternatives so that's that's the lens through which we're looking at it as the pension fund but you are quite right to say that engagement yes is the modus operandi right now and in, and following comments from yourself in previous meetings we're trying to do better with communication which you may have seen recently yeah okay yeah I, I, I couldn't quite hear your microphones off. Sorry. Um, we do need to be able to monitor progress of specific companies right, yeah. to make sure that they are moving in the right direction. And, and, uh, and, and if they're not, then we could take action either through yeah. voting or, or even disengagement. Yeah. Right? But we do, we do need to be quite specific about some of the companies. And it seems to me that this is what you're proposing yeah. here. And I'm just wondering, my question was, just going back, is what is a forum for us to be able to see this and, and to monitor the progress for the, of these companies or otherwise? Right? And I think you're going to say there will be regular reports, which we yes. will see. And yes. we've actually got there after five minutes. And thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, 4th of November. <laughs> yes, 4th of November. We'll yeah. Councillor Waters, did you want to come back in? Is it a, a yeah, quick um, one? Yeah, thank you. Um, talking about those particular issues, um, Schroeder has actually increased its exposure to fossil fuels uh, in, in the last quarter or so, or over the last six months. And in addition, we've seen Schroeder fall off as one of the, um, the signatories of the UK um, stewardship code. So is there an argument that Schroeder is not the most appropriate pooled fund for us to be in um, if we want to meet what we say we're trying to meet? There's also this um, argument about engagement is better than disinvestment. Well, a classic example of where engagement doesn't work is the tobacco companies. Shareholders have historically engaged tobacco companies. Tobacco companies came out with light, low tar versions of cigarettes, heavily targeted those at, at ladies, and then smoking rates and cancer rate in that demograph increased. Further engagement led to um, the advent of e-cigarettes and vaping products, as an example. Those vaping products then came in psychedelic looking packaging with a kid on a skateboard and flavors such as rhubarb and custard and smoking rates went up or tobacco usage went up with with young kids in their teens this pension fund invest in pooled funds and they also stock pick as of the 31st of march this pension had £13 million invested in British American tobacco. Arguably, tobacco is a dying industry. It, smoking rates are declining. 
And so to combat that, companies like British American Tobacco, which this pension fund has had £13 million invested in, bought into a Canadian recreational drug company. Um, they manufacture cannabis and they sell it for recreational use. So this pension is actually exposed to tobacco and recreational drugs, which are not even legal in the UK. And some of that has come from engagement where they said, well, low nicotine, okay, so the tobacco company thought, let's get into cannabis. That shows engagement doesn't necessarily work. I'd quite happily forward a motion if we were to come out of tobacco companies, but I'm, I'm not sure anyone would second me in this, but um, I don't think tobacco companies actually hit our fiduciary duties. It's a declining industry, as I've said. I've got a six-year-old son. What message does it send out that we're invested in tobacco? And sovereign wealth funds are getting out of tobacco because they don't believe the investment case of it. But here, the Nottinghamshire Pension Fund is invested in tobacco because we want to look at engagement as opposed to disinvestment. And the same is true of fossil fuel companies, where I've just alluded to, Schroeder have increased their exposure. And where we have stock picked, some of our biggest companies are BP and Shell. And I know they're trying to do some good things for ESG purposes, but it depends what environmental things they are trying to do. If they're using farmable land to grow bio crops and it means people are starving in less economically developed countries, is that is that good? I'd say probably not. If they're using offshore wind, then then fair enough. So there's lots of, of considerations here, but let, let's look at Schroeder and that tobacco argument. Thank you. Well, f firstly, what we're trying to do here is to approve our strategies that all fit together. The, the stuff that you're talking about lies behind. And, in, and actually, you'll have an opportunity later today um, to talk to Schroders, and maybe you would like to raise that question with them. And we, we all be thinking the same. For, for so, what it's so, worth, well, I'll be happy well, to do well, that. But um, well, okay. we are the pension I, I'm, fund. I'm, I'm we are quasi-trustees. We set the mandate. Question. Lee, I'm responding to your question. Please don't interrupt me. We don't. We, we want to try and have a reasonable meeting here. Tamsin, do you want to add to what I've said about Because we, we don't look at individual, this is not about individual investments. And, we, and if we choose an asset allocation that has passive, that follows the market, we invest in companies in, the, in, that, in that benchmark, in that market. So uh, the, cost, the cost of looking individually is quite high. So that means that your net return post cost of investment is, could be lower. What we have to make sure is that we have the right investment returns set off with the right costs so that the net returns meet our investment needs for the future pensions of our pension fund members. Tamsin, do you have anything to add to that? Only to say that I'm really hoping that um, Councillor Waters comes to our climate risk yes. workshop at the end of September. Please. Yes, thank you. And Mike, did you want to speak next? Thank you. Yeah, um, but forgive me because I, I want to actually speak on the the strategy. I, I believe yeah. that's what we're looking at here. Yeah. yeah. OK, um, so uh, this is a positive move. There's things in here that we've not had before, so it's really positive. Um, going back to, to what Councillor Chaplin and what Councillor Walter says, I think sometimes the detail and what's not presented to us can, can be something that we lot. I think William's alluded to that in, several times in his speeches. So I'm not sure how much detail we can get in that. But I think if we're going to be specific, company specific, it may well be what we don't see in the investment outside of it, which is probably more for scrutiny than actually what we're presented with, if that's uh, if that's something that we can see. Historic, I think we were talking about historic historic issues that companies put forward to us all in all. It's a smashing the strategy. It's a great move forward, same as everything else is. Um, and I'm sure we can do a lot more in the future. So thank you for that. Thanks, Mike, for that. Uh, Councillor Camilleri, Andre. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to. Uh, I'm interested in what Councillor Waters said. Uh, to be honest, it would be a good idea if he uh, brought it to our attention instead of just bringing it to the pension committee. But obviously, it's it's a grandstanding operation. Um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm against uh, investing in tobacco, and I'm, and but I don't like to hear it at, at a committee meeting where you're just doing it to make things. And I'd actually like you to circulate the papers so we can have a look to see what you're saying is accurate, because I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. Um, but I think the, the strategy is, is quite good, and I think you're doing a, a fantastic job. Well done. Thank you. Um, Sheila, you've, you've had a couple of chances so far. I'll come back to you if I have some time. Sheila. Can I just say, I remember when we pulled out of John Players yeah. and all problems it caused for workers and everybody, but it also caused people to bring cigarettes in from abroad, sell them cheap, so it didn't really get rid of people smoking. All we did was get rid of having an investment in cigarettes and things. You know, it's it swings and roundabouts, isn't it? People are never going to stop smoking if they want to smoke. Well, I, I think you raise an issue, a very important issue. There's an all-party parliamentary group on just transition right now, run, mm -hmm. uh, which is led by Councillor uh, Betts. I think he's a Labour MP. So, and I've, I've, I've been on those on those. So, it is very interesting some of the points you raised there. Anne, please, you're next. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, it's on com communications again. Um, I, I understand your table, with, which is sort of driven by target groups. I was just wondering whether it was worthwhile uh, putting a, a, a similar table together, which was actually information driven, cat categorised as a driver rather than the target audience so, um i mean i and i do feel that yeah i um i think i raised the thing earlier in the year about engagement and, and the communications and yeah it's all very well we can see how uh, sorry excuse me we can see how the uh, managers are um engaging with the companies but uh, we don't get a lot about the outcomes uh, of that engagement and, and how successful it, it, it was. I mean, it's all very well having the stats about how they voted, but it, it's really the outcomes. And, and I know you were, you, you were looking at that and the, the fund uh, investment managers were looking at that as well. But I just wondered whether at some stage that needs to be put into the uh, one of these documents, either the communication strategy or, or the uh, company or oh, the, the engagement, wherever we dealt with, which whichever one we've got, we've dealt with the uh, engagement strategy. Thank you. <laughs> William, do you want to come back on that? Yeah, um, it's not coming back at all. It's just um, Schroders do produce a pretty comprehensive yeah. report, not just on what they've done, but yeah. what the outcomes are. And maybe you're right that more should go into the communications. But I think they're doing their bit. It's up to us at this end to do our bit. And we, 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 are, we are improving that. We are adding to the website. We're putting links to all the, all the investment managers and partners that we that we engage with as part of that process. So and I know it's hard work, but there's a hell of a lot of there's a hell of a lot of information, Anne. And and I, I you do know, agree. Yeah. And, but the, the, the problem is sometimes the overall or the big picture can get lost in all the detail. Yeah. Is, is sure. the problem. Thanks. Okay. Um Lee, just a very quick please, and it must be on the subject of this strategy, because well, we've, we've, well, we've, we've gone away. It all links into this strategy, but what I wanted to um, to remind the vice chairman of, who he should know because he's the vice chair, if you look at our website and you click on equities, and I can bring this over to you, you click on equities, listed on there is British American Tobacco as one of the asset stock picks we've chosen. And then I can show you to web links about British American tobacco buying into recreational drugs. So again, I'm happy to ask for a seconder if anyone wants to support me in putting an emergency motion forward to disinvest from tobacco, because I do feel that is part of the, the asset allocation. As I don't see a seconder, I can only assume that this pension committee is happy to be invested in tobacco. 
Thank you. OK, I don't think we're going to get any further with that. So I'm not going to take any more questions or comments. We've had a, a, a big discussion. We've spent a lot of time on this, but are very important that our strategies all come together. So I'm now going to take the vote, please. All those in favour of our strategies. Do we have any against? We have one against and any abstentions. OK, thank you very much. That the, the strategies are carried. Thank you. OK, so the next item is the work programme, item number six on your pack, starting at, oops, my thing falls off, 147. Um, so uh, I'll move the recommendation report, which is on page 148, uh, the uh, agenda pack that the committee considers whether, whether there are any amendments are required to the work programme, and I'll formally move that recommendation. Ask for a seconder, please. I'll second that and reserve the right to speak. Thank you. Do I have any questions about the work programme, please? Mike. Thanks, Chair. Just a quick one. I think um, you were talking to the... Um, in reference to the non-voting members, so we can have a discussion about that moving forward. I can't say anything on here at all about that. Sorry, comes in. Can you? It was a request that we reviewed um, the position in terms of non-voting members on the committee and why we adopt that. Oh approach. yes, I think. The, I think Marge had it in. Marge yeah. had it in hand. We're going to talk to Marge. Um, it, it is being looked at. I can assure you, it's very complicated, um, and it will be brought back. Um, I, I can't give you a, a date right now because there's a lot of legal stuff, but it, it, we will be bringing it back. Um, for people to look at. You have my assurance of that. Okay. Lee. Uh, Chair, was that relating to um, the pension fund members where we're vacant to positions? That's the whole of the constitution. Yeah. We're looking at the whole. Okay. Um, for the working plan, what I could suggest, as no one did second the motion, could we look at tobacco holdings in the pension as part of our stewardship? And could we even look at are we ex how much PFI in the NHS are we exposed to? OK, that, well, that, that's part of our investment uh, strategy and our asset allocation, et cetera, work, I, I think, comes in, isn't it? So that's already in there in a broad sense. So we could look at that. Um, yes, certainly if we are looking at changing the investment strategy yes. then we always review our strategic asset allocation yes. and our investment strategy at the working party yes. in january yes um if there's a particular factual question about one of our investments if you just email it to me i'll try and yeah. find an answer for you yes yeah, a very good point put put your questions in writing lee and we'll we'll, we'll come back to that mike yeah sorry i I'm, i don't agree with, 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 with councillor yeah. waters very often to be honest but i think the, the, the tobacco thing is an issue which we, sh we should all be aware of. And, and if we can get the answers, then let's bring it back to committee yep. and talk about it yep. rather than, yep. than email individually. So uh, as requested to bring it back to committee, if we can terms it, yep. I think it should be. OK. Um, again, it'd be part of the work we're doing in that. So we're part of a report. And just with it being specific and somewhat specific with what council It can be part, in part of the let's report, Mike. Let's make it a specific thing that we can look at yep. without having to tread through anything. Just make it specific. Um, I, I was just going to say that decision, um, we've got the climate risk workshop at mm -hmm. the end of September, and that's going to look at the um, the implications arising from choosing to divest from certain stocks. And I would say that after we've been through that process, or possibly even as part of that workshop, it would be a good time for okay. initial discussions on tobacco as well. Okay. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, please? I see no more hands raised. So, sorry, Mike. Just to be clear, sorry, uh, I'm sorry. So, we are going to, <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not sticking up for him, trust me, but we are going to be specific on, after we've talked about the climate change and our investment, with the question that's been raised about tobacco. Yeah. Yeah. Can I suggest maybe, Joe, if we put it, with your permission, if we put it on the list at the bottom of the work programme without a date, yeah, and then right. at, the, at the workshop we'll decide how we want to take it forward. And so it's an aid, an aid memoir, something. but it will be in, yeah. in that process, yeah. Lee? Yeah, thank you. Last bit from me. Um, 
Can we also look at in that working group um, what the carbon scoring is of our investments? Because if it's company X or fund X, I don't know what that's contributing to environmental change. So part of our stewardship, it would be good to, to include that in that particular workshop. Um, I think that will be better oh. covered when we look at our climate risk analysis. Yes. Um, and I suspect it might be worth, last year we had a training beforehand so that Central could go through the detail and the issues around the model. Um, and it sounds like that would be a, yeah. worth doing that again. Yeah. And, and, and when we ha I think we raised some of these issues um, after the last meeting when, when we had LGPS here and part of their presentation was on the on climate risk and uh, responsible investment strategy. Um, but I don't think you were there for that. I think you left before that, that work. You stayed for the first part of the presentation, but left before, before that. Yeah. OK, um, thank you. So I'll now move to the vote. All those in favour, please, of the work programme. Any against? Any abstentions? I think that's unanimous. Thank you. That's carried. Tamsin? OK, we now move on to item number seven. It's the uh, William, our independent uh, advisors report. So we'll, we'll now receive the, um, the report. William Bourne will hand over you to present it, please. And right, then thank I'll you ask very much, comments Chair. and questions. Um, so I'll just very quickly just kind of run through the major points of what I've written here. In June, I kind of made a fairly strong point that I thought that equity markets were getting close to the top, not predicting an immediate kind of sudden drop, but definitely getting quite close to rolling over. I haven't changed that view. Um, what has happened is, first of all, we're seeing a withdrawal of the fiscal and monetary stimulus, i.e. taxes, taxing, um, tax easing and um, monetary easing. And you can see that in yesterday's announcement, but it's also happening at, 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 on the monetary side. Central banks are beginning to withdraw the monetary stimulus. We've also had a kind of resurgence of kind of COVID cases, and all of that's put a bit of uncertainty over the economic recovery. The other big thing which has happened is inflation particularly in the US, the UK, has gone up to levels which we have not seen for a very long time, 5% plus. And there's a number of scenarios which could kind of pan out from here. In my view, and this is probably the most, most important point, the biggest mover is actually going to be China. And that is because China's been on a bit of a different path. Their economy has been actually contract, not contract, has been kind of slowing down over the last few months. The question is, are they going to be happy to let that carry on or are they, they actually going to increase stimulus to start the work, to start their economy going, going again? Because if the latter, China is the world's major trading and manufacturing country, therefore it will have a big impact on the rest of the world. Best case, China starts to kind of ease, global economy stays at a reasonably high level, inflation comes down a bit, and we carry on much as we are. But there are a lot of less good cases out there. And my best estimate is that we're more likely to have a kind of more negative kind of um, scenario than that, that kind of best case. Final point I just make is, from this fund's perspective, we are a well-diversified fund. We're, over the last five years, we've gently been diversifying into areas like infrastructure, which provide inflation protection. Um, and so even in the worst case, the fund will, you may see the funding ratio drop a bit, but you won't see, you know, you shouldn't be worried that we're suddenly not going to be able to pay, pay pensions or anything like that. But I suppose there's a slight heads up that in the worst cases, you might see the funding ratio drop a little bit. So with that, I'll just shut up and open up to questions. Thank you, William. Um, very important that we understand those those long term and all those macroeconomic stuff going on. And it, so, thank you for your for your report. Any questions or comments about the report, please? Mike, only one. Uh, and and uh, this is, goes into the public domain. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Long bull market. Oh, we know what that is. I would imagine that anyone that's just picking up on this, going through it, would really struggle. So I appreciate using the long bull market as a reference, but a little explanation after it, because not everybody's got Google on the phone to see what <laughs> bull market is. Other than that, uh, William, thank you. 
Yeah. My only comment to that, really, before William comes back, if he wants to make an explanation, is, is that those, for, for, certainly I agree that the public are in a different place, but certainly members of the committee really should understand that. And that's why, that's why, we, that's why we have the training set up. So it's very important that members do do the training. William. William. I did say to you that we understood it. Yes. It was a public thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. William. It is an absolutely fair point, Mike. And I mean, what, yeah. what has been happening is you've had all this stimulus for the last 13, 14 years. Yeah. Um, and it hasn't gone into the real economy. It's all gone into financial assets. And that's why, you know, if you're a pension fund, you're happy. But if you're an ordinary person, you're much less happy. And I completely agree with that. But I think, from the perspective, as the chair says, from the perspective of this pension fund, I'm afraid, well, I'm afraid it has been a, a good in terms of asset values. Okay, Mike? Yeah. Okay, lovely. Okay, I, I think there's no more questions or comments, so I'll thank William for the report, and we'll move on to the next item, which is item number eight, which is the fund valuation for quarter one. Um, before I hand over to Tamsin, um, can I move the recommendations that are set out on page 162 of the report? Uh, that one, the committee approve a reduction in the allocation to UK 35% of liquid list, listed equities, and that members consider whether there are any actions they require in relation to the issues contained within the report. May I have a seconder, please? I second that, Chairman. Thank you very you much. Right. Thank you. Tamsin, do you want to take us through the report, please? Thank you, Chair. This report is to inform the Nottinghamshire Pension Fund Committee of the value of the pension fund at the end of the latest quarter and to provide information on the performance of the fund. The table in paragraph three shows the valuation at the end of June and at the end of March and the value a year ago. The fund investments have increased by 285.6 million, which is 4.7% since the previous quarter as the market has continued to grow. Within this valuation are 346 million of infrastructure investments amounting to 5.4% of the fund. 6.9% up from 6% of the fund is now committed to infrastructure investments, largely due to commitments made to LGPS Central's new infrastructure fund. Paragraph 5 shows a more detailed analysis of valuations by portfolio, and paragraph 7 shows the fund account for the first quarter of 21-22 and the full year figures for last year. Paragraphs 8 to 19 relate to the fund's holdings in fossil fuel companies and investments in sustainable equities and renewable energy. There are a number of caveats that need to be understood in interpreting this disclosure, which are explained in the report, and I refer members to these. Over time, it is anticipated that fossil fuels will decrease as a proportion of the fund and that investment in sustainable equity and renewable energy will increase, but this long-term trend will not be smooth. At the end of June, we had an estimated investment of 155 million in fossil fuel companies, which is 2.4% of the fund and sustainable and renewable energy investments amounting to 257 million or 4% of the fund, showing a significant increase on the previous quarter. Members are reminded that a more thorough assessment of our exposure to fossil fuels through our equity investments is provided by LGPS Central's carbon risk analysis, which assesses the carbon footprint and weight in fossil fuel and coal reserves. A report on this will be made to the next committee meeting. The core index portfolio section reflects the equity market movements over the last quarter. There were no purchases or sales during the quarter. The Schroeder's portfolio shows the regional analysis of holdings and purchases and sales during the period. The LGPS central portfolio shows investments in the new multi-asset credit fund, the new infrastructure fund and increased investments in emerging market equities. Aberdeen have continued to actively manage our property portfolio under difficult circumstances. They purchased a distribution unit in Southampton for the portfolio during the quarter. It's come to my attention since the papers were published that this purchase is missing from the schedule of operational matters. My apologies for this oversight. This item will be included in the next quarterly valuation report for completeness. The specialist portfolio section shows the composition and valuation of the specialist portfolio and the transactions during the quarter. And the section on responsible investment activity summarises some of the responsible investment activity which has taken place during the quarter on behalf of the fund. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Tams. And just for clarification, when I um, mentioned the recommendation at the start, for clarification, we've already approved the 35% of list equities, so that was um, an error on my behalf. So. The recommendation is that we consider whether there are any actions 
in relation to the issues within the report. OK, I'll open now to any questions or comments from members, please. Lee? Yeah, um, again, I, I failed to see the social responsibility in this, what we claim we have to meet the Paris Accord, where um, we've got nearly 2.5% of assets we can see at the moment, which excludes other fossil fuel companies where it's not their primary part of their business. It does seem quite significant. We don't seem to have any particular target for when we want to get out of fossil fuels. It's at the moment a finger in the air and, oh, well, government legislation, it will eventually happen anyway. That just seems a bit lazy. This council voted they want to be carbon neutral by 2030. Why can't the pension fund do something similar? We're still in these assets. Let's disinvest as, as fast as possible. We've shown there are renewables and other assets which meet our fiduciary duties we can be in. We could increase our allocation to those rather than sit in fossil fuels where our allocation through Schroeder has actually increased despite what we've been saying. Thank you, Lee. I think we've mentioned this a little bit before. We've got an opportunity to talk to Schroders later to, to explain the rationale behind their investments and the returns that, that, that they're doing on our behalf. And then some of these are sort of obviously, again, part of the passive index. So whilst we have a passive index um, allocation, that, that's part of that, that issue. But again, we still believe that engagement is the right way at the moment, but we, we, we are all cons constantly looking at this. Tamsin, do you have anything to add to, to that, please? Um, I, I think you've covered the points. Um, some of these would be good things to discuss at yeah. the workshop and at the end of September. Yeah, yeah. And of course, there, as, as said within the report, uh, some of the companies that we show as fossil fuel um, actually have um, green investments too, so it's not clear, it's not easy to understand the, the real accuracy of those, that information. Andre? Uh, it's worth noting, we, although we've got 2.5% uh, that we're trying to move at, we've got 97.5% that is pretty good. We're, we're on target. And, uh, well, that's what it says there, I think. Yeah, well, that's what you're saying, the 2.5% that we should be uh, moving forward. But we've got 97.5% of the fund is reasonably okay, I think. I think I'm right to say that. I'm not. No. I, 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 I don't know. I just want that clarif clarifying, please. I, I tried to explain that before. The, yeah. the figures are not 100% accurate. No. And so, Tamsin, do you want to give just us a clarify? Yeah, is it because it's what it says really here? Is that please read the caveats yes. that are in the yeah. report. It's in the report. Um, trying to. The, this this disclosure is made as a response to try and provide a bit yeah. more information about yeah. where we are and the direction we're moving yeah. in. It was never going to be a straight line and it's never going to be completely accurate because of the way the information is pulled together and where it's come from. Um, there are some renewable investments which are hidden away within our oil and gas. There is some Potentially, there is some bits of uh, fossil fuel which may be hidden away in some of the other companies, um, and it's it's not an accurate figure. It's just an indication, um, and over time, it should show the trend. We're confident that the direction of our investment strategy will be to reduce this over time. We're already lower than the benchmark, which is what the last risk analysis says, and I am optimistic that the next report will show progress. Thank you very much. Lee, is it a new issue? Yeah, new I was item? just coming back to the vice chair where, where you made a comment, well, the upper 97.5% must be good. Well, don't forget this pension fund is in alcohol, weapons, tobacco, African child slavery, animal testing. So if we're saying this is socially responsible, I don't know what socially irresponsible is. Um, I would say, though, this pension fund, we are the quasi-trustees. We set the agenda. We tell the fund managers what we want. It isn't the other way around, Chair. We can stamp our feet up and down and say, no, we want to disinvest and we want you to deliver that. And that is in our uh, remit. And, and you have the opportunity of being part of that process. Uh, welcome you've been part of that process. 
Um, any other questions or comments, please? Um, just, um, yeah, I accept it, but but what I'm saying is that the two and a half percent, that's what I'm reading here, four percent up where it is. We are doing it, we are on his way, we are doing a good job, we are getting there, and we are socially responsible. I think everybody here is. I mean, we've talked about tobacco. We will look at that. We will listen to what you've got to say. But but just grandstanding for the sake of it all the time, I don't think it does the committee or, or, or our reputation any good anyway. That's all I'm saying. Okay, let's move on. So um, we've had the reports. Thank you much. Um, we'll move forward on to the detail, more detail with the... Um, yeah, with, with the... With Sorry, the individual in investment managers is it a quick one mike yeah no i'm just i'm about to say that I'm, i'll just sum it up if you don't Sorry. mind <laughs> so um are, is yeah, there a I question just, I, I want to make a couple of quick points first of all we've just got to be a bit nuanced about um about fossil fuels i mean you've got in front of you a mobile phone that mobile phone will be made of plastic the plastic requires aniline Aniline comes from fossil fuel. It's going to be pure. Throw your mobile phone away. We have, we're struggling with something that's really complex and nuanced. We've just got to get you get you do not get there in a straight direction. You've got to move. It's two steps forward, one step back, one step to the side, two steps forward. It is a really messy business. So I just want to get that across to you. All right. Uh, that's the first thing. My second point. My second point is. Um, just going back on performance indicators, this is really nice, clear stuff, right? But the real performance indicator is the degree to which this covers our obligations. Absolutely. Right? And I would love to see every time we do this, look, we've just, you know, our, our investments have gone up X, mil, X million, right? Or gone down X million. However, our obligations are X plus, or in, in some cases, X minus. So when we and I and I'd say this, not having seen, you know, this missive from um, yeah. that you sent, and I apologise for having missed it. But I'd, if we could look at doing that, I'd be, it would give some perspective to where we are. I see a, a look of pain across your face. <clears throat> William, I think you indicated first. Yeah, just, just um, very quick coming back. I mean, the liability is. You can't, as you can't measure them every three months. That's just not possible. What you do get Actually, in the exempt part is the liability benchmark, 5.8%. That is the target return we need to meet our bench to meet our liabilities. And you can measure how the fund's done over the quarter compared to that. You're saying that it's embedded in the discount factor. I'm saying that the. He's nodding and you're asset disagreeing. Asset. Tamsin, your, your, your microphone, please. Sorry, sorry. Um, I mean, that, that is a fair way to assess it if you want a, a regular way. Um, mm. the Because the pension liabilities are only measured by the actuaries once every three years. And at that point, we will then potentially have a different target return which is the liability mm. sorry, but, 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 but when the actuaries do the report and the predictions, they do put a little bit of oh, conservativeness yeah. in the figures. Don't so they do at that small point. Anyway, so yes, yes. We do do that. We, we've got our asset allocation and the returns that each of those asset, asset groups returns do build back into us being able to meet our liabilities. And that's what the actuaries do to make sure we're doing mm -hmm. it. And actually, they don't just go away. Every, they're just still there. It's They're a still dark there. Art, it exactly. is. It is. And they should not be taken too seriously. Okay. But anyway, can, that's by the by. Can we just wind this up quickly, please? Yeah, I, I'm just going to. I'm going to be a little bit mischievous and ask Graham. Say, could you please read my working party report on benchmarks? I do yeah. make the point that it's really important when looking at the liability benchmark yeah. to look at it over a long period, not just a few months. Yeah. I'm sure you know that. But. Um, yeah. Okay. We can continue this later, Graham. Thank you. Okay. So. Um, We've had a good, a good discussion. Um, all those in favour of the recommendation, please. Thank you. Anybody against? Any abstentions? We have an abstention. OK, so that's carried. Thank you very, very much. OK, item number nine. Um, we now need to move to where we exclude 
the public, so the exclusion of the public, the committee will be invited to resolve that the public be excluded for the remainder of the meeting on the grounds that the discussions are likely to involve disclosure of exempt information described in Schedule 12A of the Local Government Act 1972, and the public interest in maintaining the exemption outweighs the public interest in disclosing that information. So I'll move that. All those in favour, uh, second, some second, please. I'll second that. And reserve I'll the right. vote for that, please. All those in favour. Okay. Do we have anybody against? Any abstentions? It's carried. Thank you. So I think we now need to uh, 